Hey there, my fellow bounty hunters. What up? And welcome to another episode of Robo Fett. And as we all know, for uh, Monday Night Football, for some reason, they released the Star Wars trailer tonight. Now it's all over the internet. It's leaked. I've watched it quite a few times, and I am ready to discuss with you guys why I am kind of concerned about Star Wars at this point. So we can make this into another video at some point, but basically... I've watched The Force Awakens several times, and I'm not as... I, I, I thought it was a, a really, really incredible movie the first time I watched it. Um, and, and with each watch, I have just found more and more things wrong with the movie. Things that I don't really think I saw before. And I only say this because this is leading into my opinion of Star Wars as it exists today. So let's talk about what concerns me about this trailer. We get a lot of information in this trailer and about 10 references to Empire Strikes Back. Now a lot of people have brought up the parallels of between A New Hope and The Force Awakens. There's all kinds of those videos out there so you can go check those out. But one thing can be for certain, okay? Star Wars nostalgia will blind people so much and I just don't want it to do it to me anymore, okay? I love Star Wars. I've loved Star Wars forever and Whenever I see something that's Star Wars, I tend to get really excited about it. But when I pull back and I look at this trailer, it just looks like Empire Strikes Back to me. You know, maybe a few things changed here or there. We've got walkers now that look like freaking Kylo Ren's helmet. <laughs> and uh, it's funny, the original walkers were based off elephants. It looks like these are based off gorillas or something with the way they walk. We've got Kylo Ren looking out, and just like in the opening scene of Empire Strikes Back, with Darth Vader looking out. We've got the Millennium Falcon th flying through a cave, just like it did when Han Solo had to fly into the meteor. And of course, we have Rey training with... Luke Skywalker very much the same way that Luke trained with Yoda. Except for Luke had to go through stuff before he could get to Yoda, unlike Rey. See, one of the biggest problems I have with Rey, and hopefully something that they fix in this movie, is the fact that she doesn't really have to struggle for anything. Rey just kind of just figures everything out. She just kind of stumbles into stuff, and it just kind of works out for her. She kind of just figures out how to use the Force on her own. She kind of just defeats Kylo Ren, who's a seasoned uh, Jedi and who has been trained in the ways of the force she just figures out how to use the jedi mind trick in fact the only uh struggle it seems like ray has gone through was being left on jakku all those years and we really didn't even get to see that we just got to see the beginning of her being able to get off that planet so we need to see some struggle we need to see some stuff from ray coming up um we've got uh a lot of memories going on a lot of uh, flashbacks going on which is worrisome because that's not Star Wars like at all. I mean, if you can think of one flashback in any of the Star Wars movies, just one, then I'm talking about the mainstream movies. I'm talking about I'm talking about the original trilogy and the prequels, okay? There's there's no flashbacks at all. So when you have to have flashbacks that uh, explain things in Star Wars, it makes me think that maybe something's not going right. Maybe something in your storytelling is off because they've never had to do it before. So why start now? Looks like Finn's finally gonna fight Captain Phasma. Captain Phasma is actually back and she didn't die. Um, hopefully they make this a lot more interesting, uh, a lot like something to build up to this because so far uh, I feel like we're supposed to feel something of uh, when they fight and right now I, I just you know uh they had a few scenes in the last movie and that's it i remember in one of the previous trailers we had some sort of uh land speeders that are similar to the snow speeders flying across um what looked like a desert or like a rocky terrain and of course we see the walkers on the rocky terrain which leads me to believe that there's going to be speeders fighting walkers yet again and it would seem from this trailer that Rey just has some sort of raw power. And why not? Because we need her to be the most powerful without even having to do anything. This is the problem I've had. Um, you know, in the original trilogy, Luke, he had to struggle. He, he didn't learn things right away. And he had to figure things out the hard way. Whereas, you know, he had to almost get killed by a snow monster and he almost had to get blown up by his own dad and he had to have somebody tell him how to use the force. These things, they don't seem to apply to Rey. I've heard some mumblings across the internet that it's supposedly she's going to be the most powerful Jedi ever lived, uh, more powerful than Yoda and all that. 
If you want fans to swallow that, you're gonna need to sell it. That's all I'm gonna say about that. You know, it, we, we need more than, than uh, what they've given us so far. And as you can tell, Disney has their hands in the cookie jar. Yes, I'm talking about the cute, adorable little Porg creatures that have no place in Star Wars. They belong on the same drawing board that was thrown in the fire with Jar Jar Binks. To me, this creature has a, a purpose that is threefold. One, it gets all the girls to come in the movie and go, oh, that's cute. It looks like a freaking sidekick from Tangled or some other Disney movie. Second, this thing is going to sell toys or it's supposed to sell toys. I really haven't seen too many sell seeing as uh, the large plushie is about $40 that makes a couple noises and then they have different variations of whatever. There's probably like 10 different toys right now you can get of this porg creature even though the movie's not even out yet and third it's there to remind you that yes disney does own star wars now so you better deal with it we see a lot more of luke skywalker than we have before he's actually talking now uh that we get to see it's not him voicing over the whole trailer he seems to be very concerned about how powerful ray is he seems to be uh concerned about what the outcome is going to be we see snoke the decrepit old pile of cat crap that is about as cool to look at. You know what? He is just really not cool to look at. He makes me want to get a vomit bag out. Got Kylo Ren. He's got some sort of stuff on his face. His scar just kind of is wherever they feel like it should be. Oh, uh, he might kill Princess Leia. He might not. I The biggest thing with Princess Leia is um, I know that my curiosity will probably never be satisfied as to if she would have survived this trilogy whether you know if if she didn't pass away unfortunately so i'm just wondering were they going to kill her off in this movie anyhow or are they just going to do it? you know they're going to most likely do that so i i'm just curious was was somebody from the original trilogy going to survive this because we know luke won't and basically a big i i have a couple of big detractions from why i'm just not so pumped about this um this next upcoming star wars movie Mark Hamill as just basically, I mean, you can just look up freaking collages and videos of him. Just, he, he just really does not seem happy with, with what's, what's been going on with the movie. That guy has been a part of Star Wars <laughs> for a long time, as we all know. So I really do value and respect his opinion. And of course you have Kathleen Kennedy who took over Star Wars and said to George Lucas, Oh, don't worry. I'm going to make sure that all of your characters are well taken care of. I'm going to protect everything that you've made. Well, tell that to Han Solo down at the uh, down at the freaking bottom of that trench that he fell into. I'm starting to get the feeling that a lot of the uh, old characters are getting pushed out, and I don't really think it needs to be that way. I I honestly feel like there's enough room in the movie for everybody. There's enough room for Rey and there's enough room for Finn and there's enough room for Luke and there's enough room for Han Solo and there's enough room for Princess Leia. There's enough room for everybody. I mean, that would be like saying in the Avengers that I'm sorry, Thor, but this movie needs to be about Iron Man, so we need you to get out. I mean, there's enough room for everybody. For me, this is just my personal feeling. I grew up with the original Star Wars, and thus I want—I really am invested in those characters more than the new ones you're trying to shove down my throat. So, by the way that they are doing this, um, I, I feel like by by the way they are uh, treating the characters, it just makes me as a fan—it just—it just gives me a hard time to to accept these new characters, um, and I just really hope that they do a good job and. Honestly, I really want a twist. I really do want a very good twist in this movie. And um, one big thing that me and Heaven, uh, that's my fiance for those of you who are new around here, were arguing about was whether at the end of the trailer is Rey, um, she thinks that Rey might be turning to the dark side. I thought the opposite. I thought maybe Kylo Ren is um, turning to the light side or... I'm sure that that's edited in a very tricky way, but that'll definitely be interesting to see how that turns out. So while a lot of people might look at this movie and feel nostalgic and even to a certain degree, I get those feelings deep down. I 
am going to be very reserved about this. We'll see what happens. I really want to see the movie. From the things I've seen Mark Hamill saying, and just the things I've seen Kathleen Kennedy do. I mean, I'm very concerned about where Star Wars is heading as a brand. I'm concerned about these little mini movies that they want to do. I'm concerned about how much Star Wars content they're pumping out at once, and that is going to be too overwhelming for the market. I'm just concerned about Star Wars in general. And that's pretty much my feelings, guys. I would love to know how you feel about Star Wars down in the comment box below, so please hit me up down there. Love you guys. Appreciate you for watching. As always, stay awesome, stay beautiful, and I'll see you in the next video.